In the Apollo 12 lunar module, astronauts Pete Conrad and Alan Bean make their final approach above a region of the moon known as the Ocean of Storms. I got something on my horizon out there. I got some craters too, but I don't know where I am yet. I thought, where are we going to land? There's no room to land. And then we waited for these probes to illuminate, which were about five feet below the landing pad. I said, contact light. Contact light. Roger, copy contact. And then Pete touched down. And a fiber landed 20 feet. For Conrad and Bean, the experience of stepping onto another world is overwhelming. I let go of the ladder. It started to wobble a bit and steadied myself. And I thought, wow, this is the moon. We're really here. This is amazing. This is science fiction, except you're living it. The astronauts spend much of the mission documenting their activities with photographs. We'd spent a lot of time being trained to take uh, photographs on the moon. They didn't have automatic focus then. They didn't have automatic exposure. You had to set them manually. We didn't screw up one single frame because we'd had this good training. In spite of challenging photographic conditions and a totally alien environment, Bean and Conrad capture images of incredible quality. But for some, the pictures seem too good to be true. The photographs are amazing, and it's very hard to believe that such quality could be obtained using relatively primitive equipment under very harsh conditions. One photograph of Bean draws unwelcome attention for NASA. The anomaly is small, but clearly visible. You can clearly see Conrad in Bean's faceplate here. But there's something else as well. It definitely doesn't belong there. The single frame offers no explanation for the anomaly. But there's another record of what happened during the mission. And a fiber landed 20 feet. Apollo 12 was also equipped with a color television camera. My job when I got out was to go over get that color TV camera and move it out and point it back so that everybody could watch. But just as he begins to film, Bean's footage cuts out, leaving no video record of the anomaly's source. Conspiracy theorists say that there's something on the moon that NASA doesn't want the public to know about. And it was very convenient that the camera broke so that there's no subsequent video footage of the landing. Bean explains the video failure as a simple mistake. I'm sure they told me in training, do not point this thing at the sun. Do not do that. I didn't remember that. And I pointed at the sun, and it burned out the tube. This is a pretty advanced camera, but there's simple physics involved. And if you point it at the sun, you're going to fry the Viticon tube, and you're going to lose the picture. Without a video record, we can only speculate on what caused the anomaly. One idea is that the rogue reflection in Bean's visor could be the command module, caught on camera as its orbit carried it past the landing site. But that explanation doesn't satisfy the Apollo astronauts. Could not be the command module, because the command module is 60 miles away, and it's not going to show up that big. Conspiracy theorists suggest the photograph provides evidence that NASA faked the moon missions. Some people believe that the moon landings never happened and that they were actually filmed in some type of movie studio. Pete Conrad takes a picture of Alan Bean with a reflection in his visor that conspiracy theorists point to as being an indication of studio lighting. If they're really on the moon instead of on a sound stage, why do we see objects reflected in their visors that's supposed to be empty up there? An overhead lighting rig on a movie set could explain the anomaly's presence, but there are other theories about its origin. I don't believe that. Back in the 60s and 70s, the technology didn't remotely exist to fake moon landings in a convincing way. I think that it's actually moon dust that has been placed on the helmet by the continual raising and lowering of the visor by the astronaut. 
With no conclusive evidence, theories about the visor anomaly remain speculation. But the idea that NASA faked the moon landings doesn't sit well with the men who flew the missions. My response to those who think it was all done on a sound stage, I think it's kind of an insult because we have furthered uh, knowledge. We've uh, done some wonderful things, and as far as I'm concerned, it's all hot air. December 18th, 2002. 200 miles above the Earth, the crew of Expedition 6 works tirelessly to complete the final sections of the International Space Station. As the ISS passes across Australia and above the Southern Ocean, the crew notices a strange apparition hovering at the very edge of space. Nikolai Badar and our Russian crewmate said, Ken, hey, come here, I want you to take a look. When Bowersox looks out into space, he is astonished to see eerie, glowing, blue cloud-like formations approximately 50 miles above the Earth's surface. Our science officer got pretty excited, grabbed a camera, and wanted to get pictures and detailed information. The obvious thought for the astronauts is that they are looking at some kind of cloud, but the altitude is too high for any kind of conventional cloud formation to occur. Clouds in space? Impossible. A cloud is a collection of countless tiny particles of water. But the air up on the fringes of space, up 50 miles into the atmosphere, is incredibly dry. It's drier than the air over the Sahara. It just doesn't make sense. But here we have photographic evidence staring us in the face. Even if water did somehow make it to this altitude, there was another massive problem preventing cloud formation. For a cloud to form, the water needs something to freeze onto. You need nuclei or tiny seeds to help the freezing process. And normally, dust blown up into the air can act as these seeds. In 2007, NASA launches a dedicated spacecraft, the 430-pound AIM satellite, to investigate the glowing cloud phenomenon. NASA's pretty much committed to, to trying to understand it and long-term study these clouds. The satellite sensors reveal that it is being constantly bombarded with cosmic dust. Scientists are astonished to discover over a hundred tons of this space dust enters Earth's atmosphere every day, more than enough to provide a seed for cloud formation. It's extraterrestrial. The dust comes from the remnants of meteors that have come and smashed into our atmosphere. 